year ago we ran the Our PCC campaign where Civi Boy activist Mike Dunlop interviewed all of the candidates in which David Jameson emerged as the winner. So David has very kindly agreed to a follow-up interview to see how he's getting on with youth issues. So hi David. Hi. Uh, um, how nice to speak to you again. Yeah, you too. Um, how was your first year in the second term been? Well, this has been a, a really challenging uh, year. It is almost a, a year now that I've been uh, re-elected. I think one of the, the big things that we've done that the public won't see mm -hmm. is we've been reorganising all the force, the way we do things. Um, the force now, officers who are out on the beat, have now got mobile devices uh, with them where they can uh, retrieve information or put information in, so much more efficient. Um, you'll see that all officers now in response have got mobile cameras uh, here mm -hmm. as well, which is helping them in their job. It, it's, and it's also helping the public as well, in that um, uh, you know, if people put complaints in, it's all recorded there, and equally if people put false complaints in, the police officer has got. Yeah. So there's, we've moved into a much more new technological age. Um, obviously, the big things that are happening, we can see that there's a move now towards crimes that are in the hidden space, in the away from the public eye. We saw just a few weeks ago the huge cyber attack that was on Britain. Yeah. I mean, that had huge effect on a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of people in this area alone. Hospital appointments weren't uh, carried out, uh, people couldn't get to see their doctors, etc. And then, of course, all the time, and this has been the case for many years, where we're having to deal with the terrorist threat and the police are there at the very front edge, uh, keeping us all safe, all the time. Okay, um, In the last interview, you spoke about increasing diversity in the police force. How's that been going? Well, we're now recruiting 800 new officers, but I have to say we've lost nearly 2,000 officers uh, since uh, 2010. Uh, cuts from the government, and we've lost large numbers of officers. So we recruited 450 in my first term, now we're well underway of recruiting the 800. And I have said that we want a force that looks more like the people of the West Midlands. We're a dynamic, changing area. People of different, different ethnicities and religions are coming in. And now the people are coming forward. We've made a special effort uh, in those communities where we weren't getting the uh, people coming forward before. Now about a third of the people who show an interest in being a police officer are now from the black and Asian uh, communities, okay. which is about the same as the whole West Midland yeah. population. And the other really encouraging thing is they tend to be first class people just as all the others yeah. are. So uh, I think to really what we've done is by not recruiting in the black and Asian uh, communities, we actually missed a chance here. Mm -hmm. There's some really, really superb people who we should be taking on, and they should be part of the job of keeping us all safe. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so you mentioned before that one of the biggest challenges for young people is unemployment, and that by um, kind of reducing crime in certain areas and gang culture, that might increase the opportunities available. Do you still believe that? I think opportunities for people, opportunities to join the rest of society and to join the main economy is what keeps crime down, it keeps uh, uh, communities together. Where you've got people living in poverty, where you've got unemployment, that's where you get divisions uh, between people mm -hmm. and that's where you get crime. Now I, I've seen this as one of the, the main things, what we do is how, is how the police support the economy and it is on the roads keeping the traffic moving, that helps keep investment coming in. Many companies are just in time. We want to see uh, the roads kept clear so those goods and the people get to work. Now, those are really important things in creating uh, employment and jobs and careers uh, for young people in our area. And we've been doing a number of things, obviously working now with the, uh, the mayor, but working with the combined authority and the local councils and other bodies as well, is how do we, how do we actually reduce that gang culture and draw people away from the attractions of that and draw them into the attractions of get, coming into the mainstream work, getting high qualifications and actually getting a good income mm -hmm. and a good standard of your life uh, for yourself away from the, the street. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot on the Gangs and Violence Commission, which I'd started uh, some time ago. A lot of that work is coming into fruition now. and We're seeing, seeing in some parts, of, particularly in Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing quite a difference now in how we're tackling other people, how we're helping them uh, to perhaps see that there's other 
alternative ways of conducting their lives. Okay, great. Um, last time you talked about um, your Young People's Manifesto. How are those priorities coming into practice? Well, the, the Young People's Manifesto it, it was absolutely key uh, to what we're doing. The West Midlands is a very young area. Birmingham in particular, half of the people in Birmingham are 25 years mm -hmm. old or under. Youngest in the whole of uh, Western Europe. So young people are, are vital. Of course, it's young people who tend to be uh, the victims of crime and they also tend to be the perpetrators yeah. of crime. So most of the crimes, and I have to say it's mainly young men, uh, but not entirely, so they are the ones who are suffering the crime against them, but also the ones more likely to carry it out. So we've been doing a lot of work, particularly with the Gangs and Violence Commission, and how we help younger people and draw them away from crime. And getting into the early stages of intervention, perhaps in the uh, end of primary school, early secondary school, mm -hmm. are where things for some young men start going wrong. And how we intervene there to make sure that they don't go down a path where they find themselves in the criminal justice system, yeah. or to drugs, and to hopelessness, but they actually find themselves into sort of positive, uh, positive lives. The other thing that we're doing is I said I'd set up a cadet system, police yeah. cadets, and we've looked into the parts of the country, and they are truly excellent. And they're drawing people of all ethnicities. They're drawing uh, people from age about thirteen up to eighteen, uh, but bringing them into activities uh, which they wouldn't have normally been yeah. able to yeah. do. And actually using them in the community at events to show that there actually is another way of doing things. And they're not all the people who you would think. They're, some of the people are, come from quite challenging backgrounds and some of them have actually found a new way of life, a new way of thinking. Yeah. And of course my youth commissioners, of whom I have uh, one in each of my areas, about 15 of them at the moment, they have been taking out the news, coming back with information for me. That has been really valuable in yeah. keeping me in touch. And of course one of my assistant police and crime commissioners is uh, only 25. And so having somebody who's a bit younger than me, yeah. just a little bit younger than me, it's good to have somebody who's younger who actually brings that perspective. Yeah. And as somebody who's 24 on my board as well, the board is quite wide ranging. We've got a 24 year old councillor on there as well. Mm -hmm. So they are bringing that theme of, of younger people right into the heart of my thinking. Yeah, okay. that sounds good, it's beneficial. Uh, so thank you for being here today. We've just got one more question. Um, how can young people in the region get involved with your activities? Well, firstly, um, if anyone wants to become a, a youth commissioner, then come forward and let us know. Uh, we're looking to recruit people through um, the uh, cadet system, if there's people of that mm -hmm. age who want to come through. We are doing some work in primary schools with our young cadet scheme. That's going to start happening at the end of the, the year. Um, I, I think as well, if the, the people see other organisations um, in the voluntary sector and other places where they can make a contribution mm -hmm. uh, towards the community, maybe through, through their faith groups, it may be through other groups as well. If people can make that contribution, not necessarily wholly related towards uh, policing, but actually doing things that help their communities. And we've got the Active Citizens Fund, mm -hmm. which is spread all over the West Midlands, where Community groups are making bids for not huge amounts of money, but a few hundred, in some cases a few thousand, where they're actually putting together in their own communities uh, activity that they want to see happen. And I've seen some younger people, one group of people started doing a big clean-up in their area, and that led to more things. It led to how you help some of the older people in the area, how you reduce graffiti, and how you reduce the threat on the streets. Others wanted to set up things like... Um, football and boxing, yeah, yeah. Uh, sports activities uh, for younger people as well. Another one was an arts project um, where people uh, took over and put street art in and also took over pieces of land uh, with the owner's consent and actually planted them with flowers and vegetables. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is great. And, and to see actually some of them quite young. I mean, I've seen seven or eight, nine-year-olds involved in that sort yeah, of thing yeah. as well as teenagers. Yeah. So there's a lot of things. But I, I would say to people, don't wait to be for somebody else to ask you. Get on and do it. Yeah. Find something where you can make a, a difference in the world. Okay, great. That's some good advice. Okay, thank you.